let's learn how to build a glass vase right click plane 3 for polygon mode select the polygon B for bevel do an offset let's move it up so the offset is here we know that shift click anywhere would repeat the last tool but middle click will do the same and repeat the last offset so if I middle click now it will do the, the bevel with the offset uh, shift click now because I just want a bevel this time shift click again to move it down and then middle click Q to drop to to be in edge mode double click P to close it Q to drop so now we can go in tab and we can see our object now for once we actually want to see the subdivision so we can go shift D but if you do shift D in uh, object mode it'll make an instance so let's delete this we need to be in polygon shift D and here we can go SDS to that means in smooth and we can do it a few times Now this is very rounded, so I can undo, and maybe before doing this, I could come here and go L and go B. That would add some line there. What you can also do is add loop without the both side. Here, shift click to do a new add loop, and here. Perfect. So. The only difference this will make is that now the top is very sharp. So Shift D again. You can press D to repeat the Shift D without the thing popping up. So I think I did it three or four times. And now make sure you're in Polygon. We're going to look at it down and we'll do a deform twist. So what a twist is, is basically the rotate with a fall off. And we'll be learning fall off in a few minutes. So somewhere around 60 something. Q to drop it. Two to be an edge. Select one edge, only one. Shift click the other one. And then you can go up arrow to repeat the pattern. Then L for the loop. R for scaling. I want to scale in the red and the blue. So then use just a green circle. Q to drop. And now we can do the tab just to look at it. I think it's too wide. So I'll go like this a little bit. And now let's do something fun. It's called fall off. So you need to be also in um, in subcomponent. And fall off are like Photoshop gradient. Uh, you can define like if you are connecting a fall off to a blur, like where there's more blur or less blur. The most common fall off is linear. And you can hook that up with the move tool, the rotate, the scale, and other. Most common follow-up is linear. Most common tool to hook it up, to hook it up, one, two, three, is scale. So to keep it simple, at the beginning when you do follow-up, it's linear, and you are using a scale. Later on, you could try other things. So the follow-up is here. I just need to draw it, and you see it's a big triangle. So that means a lot of effect here, and almost nothing here. If it's going the wrong way, you can reverse it, and you can tell him if you just want a linear fall off, uh, or uh, easy in, is out, smooth, or custom. So now the only thing we're missing is the R, so R for scale. And now when I scale, it's scaling more here than here. And this is a very nice tool. And you can end the fall off earlier, like this, by dragging. And what I want to do here mostly is change the, the mode should be somewhere here from linear to ease out I want it to curve in voila Q to get rid of a fall off it's escape let's do a new one this time we'll draw it the other way R and let's try it voila so it's a very very neat tool 
like if you had to do this by hand it will take you a while Q escape and uh, right click primitive plane to assign a material M call it glass make sure you change the name for this one you can just say floor M floor F6 to get the material library so we could just bring uh, for glass maybe something like the kitchen double click and then uh, we can just go get a glass so material glass and uh, clear glass you drag and drop it or to see a render f8 it might take a while because i'm using a laptop and like we saw in class usually i get rid of this i go delete and instead i would use a much better light called area light it's like a diffuser light so i will move it up rotate it so it's ending the right way, the right direction. You could scale it to make it stronger. Uh, here it's a little bit high, but and uh, usually I would tune it down a little bit, maybe two. Uh, and under shading, I could go under my environment, tune that down. That's my uh, the kitchen shiny. Hide it and sometime if the highlight is in the wrong position you would go here texture locator and you would rotate here and usually it's on Y so you could go 30 degree if you wanted to shine from the side or elsewhere and it should be gone I don't know why we see it uh, I think it's gone it's just really slow uh, I'm not sure why, maybe it's because I'm recording. Here we go, now you see it. And if you move the mouse, it'll go faster. To do the final, it's F9. And if you want to do a high resolution render, you would go under render uh, here. You could change the resolution with the DPI. And if you were to go for print very high, I would put the anti-aliasing to maybe 16 the shading rate maybe 0.3 if it's glass I would increase this only for glass maybe 16 16 and the thing for sure I'll change is the reflection sample uh, at least 256 maybe 512 maybe a thousand if there's still some noise in the reflection if you're dealing with glass you'll do the same with the refraction and uh, most important is the sample on the shadow at least 512 or 256